That's 800-467-7608. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. It is a Wednesday afternoon. It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We come to you from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7 milecasinocom Padres fall game one last night in L.A. Game two a bit earlier. We'll have the game for you on 1090. So for everybody that's listening on radio right now, stay with us. We'll lead you right up into the pregame. And then Boog Shambi and crew will take over for ESPN Radio. You'll hear the Padres and the Dodgers here on 1090. For everybody that's on YouTube, Slightly shorter show today, so get yourself involved in the YouTube chat right away. Chatlins, do your thing. Everybody on audio podcast, glad you guys are here. And tonight, I mean, listen, I don't know who's going to be watching us on TV tonight. I know we're on Channel 4 San Diego and Santa Barbara, Channel 118 Orange County and L.A., Cox and Spectrum Cable subscribers. I, I don't know who's going to be watching we're, us on TV. You don't tonight. think we're pulling viewers away from Dodgers Padres on our show talking about Padres Dodgers right let's let's make sure that we are going to watch Kaplan and crew talk about Padres Dodgers rather than actually watch Padres Dodgers what I would say though is between 7 and 8 p.m just use the little flashback button you know what I mean so when they go to commercial break you come over and hang out with us Mm -hmm. that's all your good idea does to me like the only idea all right uh Blake Harris got concert tickets well yeah unless you unless you're going to a concert tonight who would go to a concert tonight? Who me? Who, who I would. would go, me who would go to a concert rather than watch this game. Come on, me, I don't do man. such a thing. Me? It depends on who it is. Yeah, you going to a concert tonight, Browner? If, if I find some Kendrick Lamar tickets tonight, yeah. Yeah, where's he at? You, you tell me. Well, you I don't have to tell you. I don't you know. L A. Hey, he I is know. coming. LA? Did he come already, or is he coming to Viejas? He coming. Okay. I don't know if Kendrick Lamar is playing tonight. Is he? Hey, King. No. Mm. Yeah, so I'm talking about hey, hey King. King. Hey King, you Kendrick you can, Lamar, dog. You need some Kendrick yeah. Lamar. You can oh, hey King. 100 percent I'll for, for yeah. Kendrick, I will hey King you. You hey King me all day long, dog. All right. All right. All right. Blake Harris is here. Blake Harris covers the Dodgers. Blake Harris has been on the show a bunch during the year. Uh Blake Harris is uh, a regular weekly correspondent to the LA show, the Sedano and Cap show. And so he's back. And by the way, I'll probably never hear the end of this. They'll probably complain up there that, oh, I'm stealing the guest. And I would argue the opposite way, which is, do we not want to give this kid as much publicity as possible? But, you know, there's a lot of ownership issues, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, everybody owns something, you know. Uh, Blake what? Harris is here. What, yeah. are you, what are you doing? What, what are you, you doing? talking about? What? You're rambling. I know I am. Blake, good afternoon. Welcome back to the show. How are you, dude? I'm doing fantastic. Great to uh, be back here with you guys. And I agree from a few minutes ago, if Kendrick Lamar was playing somewhere, uh, that would be my top priority tonight. I'd Thank be going you. to, I'd be going to see Kendrick as opposed to watching game two. Now, if this was game five, the decision would be a little tougher, but yeah. if Kendrick's in town, uh, he might get top priority. I think that's the difference, Scott, is that today's not a clincher. I mean, yeah. technically the Dodgers win. It's, it's over, but yeah. yeah, today's not a clincher. No one's popping right. champagne tonight, L- except let me, me throw- at the concert. Let me throw another idea at you, though, Blake. Um, Kendrick Lamar, Browner says he's in. You have agreed. You would be in game two. You'd, you'd go to Kendrick Lamar rather than Padres Dodgers. What if another artist were playing? Alex, give me an example of another artist that perhaps somebody might go see tonight. Oh, you know, like uh, Florence and the Machine. Oh, then it's a pass. It's an easy pass. Whoa. <laughs> mm. Easy pass? Easy pass. Wow, okay. Easy so pass. Blink 182. Not an easy pass, but a, a fairly easy pass. I think we're see we're just talking about musical yeah. taste now. You know, yeah, now I'm seeing it is. Yeah. yeah, like I, Dr. I will, Dr. Dre I will and Eminem. Say that, I oh yeah, that will that that's the easiest pass. Okay. I will say this, guys, as we're just talking about concerts. I've somehow in my life only been to one concert, and it's someone you would never even guess. Kind of embarrassing to say, but it makes my girlfriend jealous. The one concert I've been to Might in my mouth. life. <laughs> that's a good guess not not quite michael buble that's oh, my only concert dang. in my oh. life a michael buble concert that's your only Christmas. concert in life the only concert i've ever been to is michael buble but it was a fantastic showing so i must was say it christmas unfortunately no but he still did sing some christmas songs in the middle of july was because of course vegas? he has to was it in I, vegas no i think it was down here at staples center years back 
Michael so Bublé. I, it's kind of interesting though to, for me to hear you say it's the only concert you've ever been to. Not that like not everybody's that into live music or that into going to concerts. But for me, I see so much live music. I see so many freaking concerts. Me too. I think last week, well, no, last week I was in Boise, but the week before that, I went to the Ohana Fest where I saw Stevie Nicks, I saw Jack White, I saw Eddie Vedder. Those were a Friday and Saturday. I didn't even stick around to see Pink because earlier in the week, I was at the Forum where I was there for that Taylor Hawkins tribute show where I saw Rush, Def Leppard, Queen, Foo Fighters, Pink, Alanis Morissette. The list goes on and on. Miley Cyrus. Would, would you have gone to that and not and what not watch the game tonight? Yes. Okay. So so yes. Now that concert I would have given up game two for. So Blake, it's interesting. You've only been to one concert. I I literally go to concerts. I'm or see live music in so bars Blake, or clubs at least twice a month. At least Blake is the right guy to talk about Padres Dodgers. Blake is the wrong guy to talk about concerts. Then yeah yeah, yeah. clearly. Yeah. I, I I've had some bad luck though this year. I was supposed to go to the Red Hot Chili Peppers when they were at SoFi about a month or two ago. Something came up. Earlier in the year, I was supposed to see Celine Dion with my girlfriend in Vegas. Then she canceled. A couple weeks ago, I was going to go see Duran Duran when they were at the Hollywood Bowl. Something came up. So for some reason, I'm just not meant to see concerts, apparently. I think wow. Michael Bublé wants me to be his only concert uh, of my entire <laughs> life, apparently. Wow. <laughs> Celine Dion. I saw Celine Dion in Vegas one time with my now ex-wife. And my ex-wife was standing next to me, and she was, like, crying. She's like, oh, my God. Like She was crying like Celine Dion. And I, was like, started to tear up also because I thought about how much money I spent on these Celine Dion tickets and how much I did right. not want to be at Celine yeah. Dion. You know, me and my fiance yeah, did I, just have this conversation. Like once Rich Paul lets Adele actually sing again, mm -hmm. I'm totally going to that oh. show in Caesars for sure. That album is going to be fire mm -hmm. when that drops. Mm -hmm. All right. Blake Harris is here. He covers the Dodgers. We didn't All really right. call him to talk about, you know, concerts. We did call him to talk about the Padres and the Dodgers. So Blake, we had some initial thoughts in the first segment of the show. Um, I would love to hear what your, like, your first thoughts are on the Dodgers win last night. You know, it, it's amazing that you could win a game in which you lead for all nine innings, but it isn't a like satisfying win. It's not really a dominating win because if you were to take the first three innings, the Dodgers were in business, no questions asked, but those final six innings, the Padres kind of had the Dodgers number in the fifth inning. They scored all their runs, but it seemed like every inning, the Padres were getting someone on base. They had the time run at the plate numerous times, but the Dodgers just made the big plays when needed. Their pitchers stepped up when needed. So yeah, the Dodgers won, but this was a game that the Padres really hung around and showed that like, I thought this would be a very difficult series. Even when the Dodgers are up five, nothing in the third inning, I thought I wouldn't be shocked to the Padres chip into this and make this a game later on. So yeah, you want to be encouraged by the win, but I think it was as discouraging of a win as you honestly could have asked for from the Dodger side of things. Oh, wow. A discouraging win. Yeah. I mean, over for you 17, were... the offense went to, to finish the game. That's, that's awful. Are I think like, we wasn't probably... the biggest, wasn't the biggest like concern was like, we don't have a closer. We don't have defined roles. Uh, AJ Przinsky get talking about like, I hate this. You need to know yeah. what your defined role is. And then your bullpen comes and just shoves it. Like they didn't allow a run and they didn't do it. Like they did great. Yeah, I don't think he quite understood, you know, the Dodgers plan. I mean, I, I'm I know he's like an old school guy, so he probably thinks he needed a closer in today's game. But the Dodgers clearly it benefited them by not having a closer because Evan Phillips, who's their best reliever, they used him in the sixth inning, which you wouldn't normally use your best reliever in the sixth inning. So I think it's actually a benefit for the Dodgers not having a closer because it allows Dave Roberts to, you know, use matchups to his advantage. And we saw it last night. Obviously the Padres bullpen was lights out. They didn't allow a hit once Clevenger came out, but the Dodgers bullpen was, you know, just as good. So I, I, I don't get Pruszynski pretty much saying that they need a closer because it worked last night for the Dodgers. All right. Uh, Blake Harris you, is here talking about the Padres and the Dodgers. Go ahead, Brown. Did you feel like Urias was sharp or did you feel like he kind of lost it as the game went on? Yeah. Through those first four innings, I mean, he was nearly untouchable. I think he allowed only one hit didn't issue a walk, but in the fifth inning, he kind of just lost command and it was the bottom of that Padres order that was really lighting him up, which we saw the Padres do in that series against the Mets. It was the bottom of their lineup. That was just, everyone was contributing. And it seemed like everyone that was coming up to the plate for the Padres 
Julio just couldn't necessarily get them out, whether it was allowing a home run to Will Myers, whether it was allowing some base hits or even some sacrifice flies. He just couldn't get the strikeout when needed like he like he did in the previous few innings. So, yeah, that fifth inning kind of unraveled, and I'm glad that Dave Roberts took him out after that inning because I think his pitch count was still relatively low, if I remember. Maybe it was like in the high 70s, low 80s. But, yeah, that, that fifth inning, uh, the Padres got to him, and they chased him because I, I thought Julio, the way he was cruising, was a lock for six innings, maybe even seven innings. Yep, 79 total pitches. I just looked up the numbers while you were yeah. saying it. So um, I would say this. If you're, the, if you're the Dodgers, you're probably feeling like, well, we just did to the Padres what we've done to them all season long. It gets back to Freddie Freeman's quote the other day. You know, they just got hot, and we've been hot for seven months. Right. If you're the Dodgers, you know, you may not have loved the way you played, um, but you had a five, nothing lead and you held on to win. And that's kind of what you've done to the Padres all season long. You've just found ways to win. Um, if you're the Padres, you probably don't feel as bad as you might've thought, especially when you were down five, nothing. And I think if you're the Padres, at least where you have some hope now is that you do line up your best pitchers because last night was the Dodgers number one against the Padres number four. So what kind of what kind of chance are you given this to become a series? Because as Alex said earlier, Dodgers win tonight, man. Kiss this thing goodbye. Dave Roberts would love to stick it to the Padres and win at Petco Park. What do you think about what's going to happen here in these next could be two, could be four? Yeah, honestly, game one was the game I was worried for most because it was advantage Dodgers in every front. They had their Cy Young contender in Julio, whereas the Padres had what their number four starter in yeah. Mike Levinger. So if the Padres would have somehow pick up the victory in game one, I would have been insanely worried because then they're just resetting the rotation for their top three. Whereas the Dodgers, you know, this is a game you're supposed to win. So it doesn't necessarily do all that much by, you know, winning this game because the Padres can still even the series and reclaim home field advantage. So I know in a five game series, especially when you just need three games to win, it's tough to really have a huge moral victory. But I think this is a big moral victory for the Padres because they hung around. If, you know, Will Myers hits that ball in the sixth inning a few feet to the right, that gets through and they tack on another run and who knows what happens the rest of the inning. So now that they have you Darvish, I think Blake Snow's going game three and then Musgrove in game four, if needed, you have the three guys that you want up. You have two of the next three at Petco park. So I think the Padres are in a really good position, but like you said, Scott, if they do lose tonight, that's going to be a daunting task to essentially win three games in a row. Now it's still possible, but yeah, tonight is as much of a must win game as you could potentially have, but at least going back to San Diego for two games where I know Peco Park's going to be rocking. They might use that home field advantage to their, you know, advantage. So we'll see, but yeah, tonight absolute must win for the Padres. I think there's a perception in San Diego that Kershaw's not Kershaw anymore. But since he's been back, oh, bruh. right. But see, exactly. there's the perception. Right there's, there. the perception. there's the perception. But <laughs> since, oh, bruh. He but ain't, since, it's ain't Kershaw five years ago. No, but literally, bro. since That's he's been probably. back from injury, he's got a sub two ERA. And the Dodgers, I, I believe, are like undefeated with him on the mound. So can you just kind of tell us how good he's been since September? Yeah, this is Clayton Kershaw's best season since probably like 2016. Like you said, his numbers since he returned from the IL are insane. Like he's been one of the better pitchers. And if you take out one of his starts from earlier in the season in Colorado, just out of the equation in which he allowed like eight runs in three innings, he would have finished the season with an ERA below two. So Kershaw, this is the best he's looked in some time. I know there's the narrative that he chokes in October. He's had his moments, but Justin Verlander, he's had his moments. We saw that yesterday. Max Scherzer, we saw, you know, a few days ago, he's had his moments. When you're in October, you're facing the best teams in baseball. Like, I wouldn't expect you to put up an ERA of two, two and a half. So he's been fantastic this season. And I don't think he's been getting the attention he deserves just because when you post an ERA of 2.3 in year 15, when that's like the 10th best ERA of your career, not going to get the attention he deserves. But this is going to be one hell of a matchup between Kershaw and Darvish. I think this is Darvish's you know, first postseason start, you know, at Dodger stadium since the infamous game seven. So it'll be interesting to see how we uh, fare is going back on the mound. So if he is coming off of injury and he's pitching the best he's pitched since 2016, should Brian Kenny check his spin rates? Most likely. I mean, Brian Kenny probably <laughs> is going to be checking everyone's spin rate. Yeah. That video clip that he posted the other day was just insane like it's almost as if pitching in a winner take all game on the road in the postseason isn't going to amp up your pitcher more where his spin rates are going to be slightly higher 
But yeah, if Kershaw's spin rates are higher, we might get a Brian Kenny video uh, going yeah. in depth on why this should be suspicious. Yeah. No chance. I no love taking freaking chance. <laughs> Brian Kenny would ever dare say about Clayton Kershaw what he said about Joe Musgrove. There is not a yeah. chance on planet Earth that Kenny would have the guts. But it's, it's, it's just spin Kershaw. rates, Scott. It's just spin rates. It's the numbers. He's looking at the numbers. It's, it's, yeah. the, the spin rates are the up. numbers tell you one thing. And that's yeah. cheating. Yeah. 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 Slightly I'm yeah. telling you right now. He I love like, let's you. take, let's take the average. Kershaw. Let's take the averages of 30 games and compare it to the biggest game of his career and be like, why is yeah. he amped up? Why? Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. If, if by, and by the way, not only would he do not do that to Clayton Kershaw, he wouldn't do that to Joe Musgrove if Joe Musgrove wore Dodger blue. Like, let's be or, real. It's or, very or easy Mets. to attack the little San Diego Padres. After yeah. yeah, or if it was like Max Scherzer, he, he wouldn't have done it to Max Scherzer if Scherzer no stayed. just said, oh, yeah. this is the guy he is. Scherzer's an intense pitcher. Yeah. Yeah. Jacob mm-hmm. deGrom has literally five blisters on his index finger, and he's throwing 102 <laughs> miles per <laughs> hour. Flames. Let's, just, let's just not talk about anything. Yeah. As Blake, you can tell, I, that hit a nerve here, Blake. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, I believe that earlier in the year, I don't know why. I don't know why I made some bet with you about like Padres Dodgers. I should have had Browner make the bet. I mean, Browner's been the Padre cheerleader all season. I would have made that bet too. And I and I've been the Padre critic all season long. You know, I've been the Padre doubter all season long. I've got probably ten or fifteen listeners that have sent me direct messages saying, "You owe me dinner," and I said, "For what?" And they're like, because you said that the Padres would not make the playoffs. And I said the Padres would make the playoffs. And now you owe me dinner. Like, did we like have some kind of an official wager going on here that I didn't know about? And um, now people are telling me, by the way, they don't need the fanciest restaurant in San Diego. They'll take Chick-fil-A. They'll take, you know, in and out, whatever. Uh, But they all feel like I owe them something because I doubted the Padres. Now, earlier in the season, didn't we make some kind of a bet about, do you remember that Alex Padres Dodgers in a series? I think it was that before. I think it was that four game series when like the division race was actually still a thing when it was like the Dodgers had like a one and a half game lead. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, it was like the four game series. And I think, yeah, the Dodgers took three or four, I believe. Yeah. And that's, and and therein lies the the problem. Yeah. Therein lies the problem for the next four, theoretically. And then mysteriously, when it was time to pay up, you weren't here the next time Blake was on. And then, oh, that's right. Yeah. I joined just these two. Yeah, so these two characters. Why are you bringing it up? You're gonna pay this up. Well, no, I just I found I found one version of the LA Cap t shirt, uh-huh. but I, I, I this is but like you're not a, wearing it. Well, I can't fit right. in. I'm so fat. Well, let's try I can't it. Fit into <laughs> it. You are I not that fat. Get out oh, of dude, here, dude. I'm telling you right now, I cannot fit into this t shirt. Strip right on. You want me strip. to try it on? All yeah, right, hold yeah. On. talk amongst it. yourselves. All right, hold on. Strip, this is great. This is one of my favorite parts of this show when this guy just takes clothes off. And comes back in screen wearing something else completely different. I like to go off camera, camera so you don't see him shirtless. Yeah, he don't want his boobies to jiggle on camera. <laughs> yeah, talk Come talking on. concerts and watching Scott strip down. I was not expecting this when I hopped on earlier. Look at that. Oh yeah. It's Whoa! A little, it's a little, it's a little, Whoa! Breathe, big fella. Breathe. <laughs> oh my god. You gotta talk, Scott. You gotta talk. <laughs> That's your thumbnail right there. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my God. I can't even breathe in this thing. I'm telling you, this is like a girl's medium. Look at this. <laughs> That's what it look looks at like. Our, look at this thing. <laughs> oh my God. I like it. Oh my Unreal. God. I like it a lot. What a freaking that, idiot. That's worth the bet right there. Just seeing yeah. him trying to fit into this shirt. I mean, that's worth the bet. Idiot. What a dumbass. That's know, like a, uh, Freddie Mercury size. What an embarrassment. Can you imagine walking around in this thing? It's like a wet. Suit. Can you stand up again? You'll be getting a lot of hate, Kings, if you're walking around wearing that shirt. You sure will. Get a lot hey. of hate from who? A lot of hate, Kings. Oh, a lot of hate, Kings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, King. Hey, yeah. King. Yeah. That's more like you, a, depending on where you wear it. That'd be more like a hey, King. Hey. Yeah. King. Really, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I come down to the right neighborhood, that's exactly yeah. right. I come walking, I come strolling down the yeah. street. Like, hey, King. Hey, hey King. King. A lot of those. What up? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh man, that That's was good. very satisfying. Yeah, you, you guys are happy worth, about this. That was worth the wait for me. Really? Yeah. You're pretty happy about Blake this. Lake huh? is your bet. What do you feel? Yeah, this this is. I mean, this is much better than a fancy dinner. This is much better than drinks. I mean, watching Scott trying to fit into this shirt, rocking it with just such pride. Uh, I couldn't have asked for a better bet that was actually won again all the way back in June. So worth yeah. the <laughs> four month wait. Pride, pride is the right word, by the way. With this yeah. shirt, hey right King. Here. You know, hey King is right. Mm-hmm. Exactly right. 
Uh, all right, listen, Blake Harris, do me a favor. Um, because of the San Diego audience and the 1090 listeners and all of our YouTube viewers and everybody else maybe is not as familiar with your work because you cover the Dodgers. Um, and if people want to come after you on Twitter, they can do that too. Um, where, where should everybody reach you? Go ahead. Yeah, so if there's any Dodgers listeners out there in beautiful San Diego or Padres fans that just want to go back and forth with me, you can find me on Twitter at Blake Harris, TBLA. That's your best bet. And again, if you want to read any articles, you can go to blakeharris.substack.com. But yeah, if, if you're a Padres fan, come at me on Twitter. It, it's a fun week, and this is a <laughs> this is a matchup that both teams desperately need. So I'm all for the friendly banter. I'm yeah, all for it, the friendly banter. So come Prediction at me. for the rest of the series. 30 seconds to go before we hit this break. Prediction. If, if Dodgers win tonight, it ends in three. If the Padres win tonight, I think it goes to five. All right. So there you go. So two predictions. I would love it for, to go to five just for the fun of it, you know, yeah. just for the fun of yeah. it. To have two games at Petco and, and to have it go back and be a complete nail biter in Dodger Stadium, that'd be so fun. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I think it'd be great for both teams and for both your shows. By the way, God, do I look stupid in this T-shirt? I mean, my you look God. great. You think so? Yes. I should work great. out in this shirt. It's stretching be... out the more you sit. Yeah, yeah. it is kind of stretching. I mean, I didn't like how you held your breath when you sat down, but other than that, it's done well. Yeah. By the end of the show, it's just going to rip. Scott's yeah. going to like take yeah. a bite of like a burger and it's just going to tear <laughs> right. open. Like Hulk Hogan-y, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Blake Harris, it's great to be with you always. Thank you for all you do. Uh, and uh, we will talk to you again real soon. Stick around, everybody. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. 7milecasino.com. We will move to some NFL at some point today, but Padres Dodgers is what's on everybody's mind. Stick around. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal sports talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Dominating the SoCal radio airwaves for over 20 years. Join Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner for Kaplan and Crew every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. The 2022 San Diego Loyal season is almost complete. Live on Your View and YourView.com, watch your San Diego Loyal take on Sacramento Republic FC Saturday, October 15th at 7 p.m. Watch the final regular season game of the 2022 season as the San Diego Loyal prepare for the USL Championship playoffs. Sacramento Republic FC versus the San Diego Loyal, Saturday at 7 on your view. okay. I had a degree and work experience. I should be able to provide for my kids, but they're just things that you don't plan on in life. My husband got laid off and we are a family of five. My mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I would ask the doctors, what can I do? And they would just say, just make sure she's eating. Our life just changed completely. Thank God that we always had a, a plate of food. When your air conditioner needs to be tuned up, repaired, or replaced, call Bill Howe, the name you have trusted for over 40 years. We carry the most reliable, energy-efficient brands that will fit your budget. Whether you are looking for a traditional or ductless air conditioning system, you know who to call. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE. Bill Howe. Because we know how. 
Do the ups and downs of the financial markets have you on a roller coaster? Don't let the market take you and your investments for a ride. Stabilize your funds with SDCCU's great rate savings, money market, or certificate accounts. Choose a savings option that meets your needs and watch your money grow with SDCCU. Earn 1.5% APY on a 12-month certificate or 2.5% APY on a 36-month certificate. Open an account at sdccu.com slash now. SDCCU, it's not big bank banking, it's better. Change the way you look and feel with San Diego's most comprehensive varicose and spider vein treatment facility. San Diego Varicose Vein Treatment Center offers minimally invasive, pain-free procedures performed by board-certified cardiologist Dr. Tahizade. With over 17 years of experience, we specialize in the diagnosis of varicose veins, spider veins on the face, hands, and legs, ankle discoloration, leg swelling, and more. Improve your vein health today. Visit consultation.sdveintreatment.com or call 619-582-2404. Welcome back. This is Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal sports talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. All right, everybody. It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown man. We're in the seven mile casino studios, seven mile casino.com. So look, the, um, the thing that we're most all talking about and thinking about is the Padres and the Dodgers, but, I definitely would like to turn our attentions a little bit here this afternoon into the NFL weekend. Uh, What happened, what's going to happen. And here to discuss from FoxSports.com is Eric Williams, who joins us every week. Eric, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon to y'all as well. I'm doing doing good. Um, Are you also as uh, Padre Dodger centric as we are, or are you like all football all the time? Come on. He's a Seattle man. Yeah, I, I was a little frustrated with the decision making there at the final of the, the Mariners game. That was rough, man. That was rough. Had him on the ropes. Yeah, yeah I may mean, I may have broke some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> man, what I don't what is it with managers getting cute and doing things in the postseason? Yeah, I mean, you let the dude close all year. Now we're gonna bring in Robbie Ray, who's gonna get smacked to to because it's lefty lefty. I mean, come on, everybody knows their role, like you know. Stay in your lane. I saw my man, uh, Dave Sims, who's the TV play-by-play man of the uh, Mariners. And when the Mariners won, I think he he's TV or – is Dave radio or TV? Anyway. It's TV, yeah. Yeah. Dave, um, at, when the Mariners won and they made it into the postseason, Dave had this call. He was like, hey, now, hey, now, hey, now. Like, he, he just said, kept saying that. And now, just the same way we put, produce T-shirts every time we come up with something – Dave's got a new t-shirt that he's advertising on social media. The three, Hey now, Hey now, Hey now t-shirt for Mariners fans. So not like this super cool one that I'm wearing, Eric, the charger hater club. (laughs) You like this t-shirt dude? Uh, No comment. (laughs) You know, you know who likes that t-shirt? Keenan. Oh yeah. Oh, Maybe you should say Staley. Strong during the game. Yeah. Maybe we would say we should make a Staley hater club. Yeah. Eric, what do you think about number one? Let's talk about the Chargers first. Chargers on the road at Cleveland. The Browns are doing everything they can to give the Chargers the game. I mean, Jacoby Brissett on a third and seven escapes a sack and then winds up throwing a terrible pass right at the goal line. And then Staley, when you've got a lead and you're on the road and you're on your own 45 and there's like a minute and change to go, like that's when you take, you don't, go for it on fourth down because by the way earlier in the game he kicked short field goals on fourth (laughs) down you know his whole go for it on fourth down mentality didn't seem to work in the early part where he kicked field goals how do you not punt that ball i mean and and then to have keenan allen say what he said about him like on twitter what do you make of that whole situation uh it's interesting you know i thought the comments were interesting after you know what staley had to say about it they had a heart to heart and, and they're good now, you know, when, when talking to media after he found out about the, the, the Allen tweet, I think in the moment, I think um, maybe head coaches are kind of, kind of a prisoner to the analytics a little bit and maybe leaning on them, like trying to win the press conference afterwards saying, Hey, analytics said, you know, we should go for it. So we did. And, and then, you know, whatever else kind of comes after that. Um, but you know, you also have to make like reasonable decisions, <laughs> like you're playing against Cleveland against Jacoby Brissett and they'd have to march the length of the field to get to the field goal. 
so yeah, why not make them go an extra 45 yards in case you don't get it? You know, again, I, I didn't like the play call either on fourth and two. I didn't think that made a lot of sense in terms of, you know, uh, designing a play to your to their best player. To me, is, is Austin Eckler. I think he should have touched the ball in that situation. So yeah, I think you're kind of kind of going back a little bit. I mean, obviously it was last year, it was analytics, you know, these, these decisions make sense. Let's be more aggressive. Now you're, you're, you're kind of seeing a little bit of pushback uh, in those situations, which I think is good. Sometimes I think that we, we make, go ahead, go ahead. I think that we've bound ourselves at a bridge with the nerds and the sports because they're looking at a sheet. Like the thing situation that happened with the Raiders, they're looking at a sheet. The coach is looking at the game. You're looking at the players on the field. You're looking at the emotion. You're looking at the moment. The analytics do not calculate for the moment. They don't, they don't calculate for, for, for certain matchups. They're just statistically looking at things. And if one of the things that he's going to lose me on as a fan of the team and as a fan of the quarterback is if you keep telling me the numbers told you to go for it, you're on the field to the hell with the numbers. So Alex, for, you, go ahead. Alex, did you want to win? No, no, no. It's a little different for me. Different. I was thinking like, we, we never have talked about, we've always talked about Staley's decisions, right. but we know as from the outside perspective, what we never talk about is what do the players actually feel about his decisions? Are we, are we, are we getting our first glimpse of the players being like, what the F, bro? What are we doing well, all this time well, for? Right. And hey, one more comment before Eric goes. Browner, you know, I'm not so sure that it's like the analytics nerds. I think the coaches have become analytic nerds. Hmm. So rather than the coaches coaching on gut and on feel, if they are using the analytics, they're as guilty as just the guys who you're calling nerds. They're the nerds. Yeah, I guess from my perspective, I'm a fan of analytics and the analytics have always been a part of the game. I just don't think they've been at the forefront of the conversation. The coaches have always had this information um, at their disposal to be able to help them make decisions. But like Browner said, and like Alex said, they can't be the number one driver of the decision-making. They need to just be part of the decision-making process. All this stuff is, is happening in, in live time. And there's a lot of situations, which I don't think the analysts count for in that game in terms of who's playing well, who's not, who's injured, who's not at that precise moment um, that the analytics can't really weigh. Uh, what, what play call you're going to make, you know, in that situation? And, and is it a good play call? And is it not a good play call? Um, you know, playing at Cleveland, you know, instead of playing at home, you know, and, and what the momentum of the game is like in that situation. Is, is the kicker kicking well or is he not kicking well? There's a lot of things that you can't, can't account for in that analysis and that's where I think as a head coach like you said you're getting paid all the money you got to kind of go with what you think is the best call based on having the numbers and everything else that's happened during the game talking to Eric Williams from foxsports.com he covers the NFL we're talking about a variety of topics that happened this past weekend we'll get back to the Padres and the Dodgers in a few minutes you know um, speaking of like coaches and analytics and decision making Browner you brought up the Raiders I know everybody's beating up on Josh McDaniels because why would you go for two in a situation where the Raiders, you know, where they find themselves to me, I don't really have as big a problem. Now on one hand, you could kick the PAT and tie the game, but can I ask everybody, if you tie that game, what are you waiting for? You're just, you're just waiting for Patrick Mahomes to come back and beat you. Right. On the other hand, if you take the lead, Maybe, maybe he doesn't, and you win the game versus maybe we have to go to overtime. I, I'm not saying it was a good call. I'm just saying that it wasn't as bad a call as people are, are making it out to be from my own perspective. What do you think? What do you think about that, Eric? I thought the call was fine. I think you're right. I mean, you're playing against Matt, Patrick Mahomes, so you're you're probably thinking that he's gonna go and lead them to at least a field goal once they get the rock. Uh, so, yeah, you, if you take the lead, it kind of puts some added pressure on them once they do get the football and start driving on your defense, which, again, your defense isn't that great. So <laughs> I think you want to try to get as many points as possible. Again, the, the call was a little weird, though. A run from from two and a half out uh, just didn't seem likely to, to, to get in there. I thought it would have been better, you know, throwing it in that situation. Um, after what? the game, how long do you think Devontae Adams is going to go to jail for? 
for his assault <laughs> on the ESPN freelance. Like, they go to jail. Come on, man. It's like a Come misdemeanor on. assault. He, he, that's, he, he's going to pay some money. He'll, he'll be good. Actually, uh, he can go to jail for up to, according to Ian Rappaport. It is. Uh, he's been charged with a city ordinance violation, which is a little lower than a state misdemeanor assault charge per the prosecutor's office. It carries a fine of $250 to $1,000 or... Ooh. Or here's a big or Ooh. up to 180 days in jail. Oh my. I say lock him up. That was a song. Wow. <laughs> wow. That I, sounds I, like listen. somebody that's playing against Devontae in their fantasy. No, with- no this is something <laughs> that's saying that Cooper Cup would never. Cooper Cup would never. Now, first of all, let's clear something up. I'm gonna repeat this one more time. If you a freelancer, you got to get out the way. You are, you blocking the exit, okay? I just had probably the worst minute in my NFL career. I'm trying to exit the field. This is my lane, bro. And you you not paying attention. You walked into me. What you mean you going to the hospital with a neck brace? Oh, you got whiplash. You walked you into me? About? You bumped into me. You need my glasses. legs are expensive. My arms and my hands are worth money, baby. You got to move, dude. You got to move. Security didn't do their job. This man didn't do his job, and he got his ass pushed over. That way he should have got. Get up. Going back to work. Keep hey, I, I, I think Browner brings up a great point. Where was security? Yeah. Usually usually those areas are roped off, and you can't run into the guys when they're when they're going into the tunnel and going to the locker room. So I think it was a little bit of a failure from a security standpoint at, at Arrowhead. That said, you can't push people like that. I don't care how angry you are, how upset you are. You kind of have to show some composure in that situation. Again, he's he's been in that situation before, I would think. You know, obviously he was upset, um, but yeah, you, you can't push a dude like that. But so you know, the, the other thing you is, have to give though, us some money, right? The thing is, is this: $1. we we saw um, the video, and Taco it Bell really Poupon. and it looked really bad, man. The, the the video looked really bad, right? Which angle? Every angle. It Not all to looked me. bad. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. to me. But here's the thing, dude. The guy um, wasn't even like looking go walking toward he was literally walking across Devonte pushes him not only does he push him he stands over him like neither, like he was fighting okay. him i'm yeah, so glad you said that he mean neither one him. of them were looking neither one of them were looking and so one of them is a football player so if something pops up into your vision what you gonna do push him out the way neither yeah. one of them were looking yeah um Look, regardless, here's here's what I just want to say. Great you know Devontae, what? man. As, as bad as it was for Devontae Adams, and as much as there was all this negative feedback, if you watch his post game, like they, they, the reporters get to him and they put their mics in his face. And the first thing he says, he goes, Hey, hold on. Before I even talk about the game, let me just say something here. Something happened out there. Gosh, I made a bad decision. I'm really sorry. I hope that dude's okay. That was like, he actually did a very classy thing. Mm-hmm after doing something that was very unprofessional, frankly. So I actually think that Devonte Adams should be getting just an ounce of credit for like acknowledging that he did something stupid and apologizing right away, rather than holding on to what, like, imagine if, if Devonte Adams was talking like Browner was man, get out the way. Where's security to help me and get, get, get out the way. I'm a football player, man. Like if, if Devonte yeah, sounds to you. It, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. Did you guys think that sounded like Brown or no? Yeah. Um, I thought, I thought he sounded very apologetic. He didn't sound very angry and defiant. And I think that, uh, I think Devontae's going to be all right. Hey, uh, Scott, what about that Taco Bell money, though? You're probably thinking about that, too. Hey, uh, let, me, let me go ahead and apologize so I make sure these endorsements are all right. But, yeah. uh, I'm sure somebody got in his ear about that, said, hey, man, you need to, like, get out in front of this thing so, so you're good in terms of your, your money. Them crunch wraps add up. <laughs> I think the bigger issue, if you're, if you are, like a Raider fan, it's not that he's pushing innocent bystanders on the sidelines and assaulting them. It's that, like, what was that final minute of the game? What were they doing? Oh, like, yeah. dude, how did him and Hunter, Hunter Renfro, Renfro deserves pl- defensive player of the week? Like, that. Oof. What what were they doing? That was concerning. I mean, and he didn't get both feet in bounds mm-hmm. on the previous play, which would have mm-hmm. moved the chains and put them in field goal position, where I thought that he had ample time to get both feet down um and so that that to me was a mistake again it was a tough play but a guy that's considered one of the best receivers in the game getting paid all that money I think he he, he should have got full, both feet in and then the following play like you said I mean I, I don't know if it was a mistake by Renfro or if 
Um, Devontae didn't run his route right, but to have that happen in that critical uh, of a situation at the end of the game just kind of speaks to you know, Josh McDaniels being the first year head coach and, and, and you know, not, not having his guys tightened up in that situation. That wouldn't happen with the Patriots, right? Did you say I got to tell I got to tell you, uh, I think this is the this is Devontae's fault because my wow. guy Hunter Renfro he don't miss no routes. Okay? Oh wow, <laughs> he don't wow. miss no routes. I'm just yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I'm gonna be honest. Hunter Renfro don't miss no routes, so this is probably on Devontae. Wow, this is a surprising <laughs> revelation coming from oh, Brandon, man right now. I really yes, hope sir. Cooper Cup pushes someone the exact same way eventually. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna lose wanna... it. I'm yeah, gonna yeah. lose it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Lock him uh, up. But since we are talking about I'm Cooper filing Cup, charges. Um, at this point, I'm thinking about trying out for the Rams because I think I could be an offensive lineman for them because they are, what is it, four dudes on IR now? I don't know, Alex. The way you've been losing weight with your iThrive weight loss accelerator program, I don't You're know, too man. too skinny, bro. Yeah, but at yeah, this moment, know. I'm still good. Nah, you man, be a DB. You, you've lost too much. You've lost too much weight. Okay. All right, go back. Go ahead. Point, Keep point being, they're a mess on that offensive line. A disaster on that offensive line four offensive line interior lineman on the I on the IL what are they going to do next man up I mean, you know I think they're going to start their there's six different uh offensive line combination for this weekend's game against the Panthers um they've had nine different guys make starts for them up front um they're averaging 16 points a game they're the worst running uh, team in the league uh the, these are your Super Bowl champs you're talking about right now um you know struggling at two and three uh, but hey, you got the Panthers coming to town. They just fired their head coach. Steve Wilkes is, is coming in, going to be the interim guy. When Steve Wilkes was with the Cardinals, you beat up on the Cardinals pretty good that, that year. Um, so I think this is a, a good get right game for them. And then they had the bye week after that. And hopefully they start to get some of those, those frontline guys healthy. But I think for this week, you know, you just kind of have to, to, to man up and, and just figure out a way to kind of piece things together so that you can operate offensively and, and staffers not back to getting smacked every play. You know, speaking of the Rams, I saw Odell Beckham earlier today send out a tweet, and he kind of was essentially saying that the Rams haven't really given him a legit offer. I'll get it. I'll pull it up here. But I'm just curious. I mean, if I'm the Rams and this season's kind of – do I – let me rephrase this. Do I think if I'm the Rams that Odell Beckham is going to save us? Hmm. That's a great question. I mean, do I really? Here, here's what Odell Beckham said. Uh, L.A. knows where I wanted to be, but they didn't offer me anything, he says. So I don't know what people want me to do. I definitely know my worth and what the offer was isn't reflective of that. So it's tough to say that I can come on back, even though I thought I finally found that home. So, you know, if Odell Beckham doesn't get hurt in the Super Bowl, he's playing for the Rams right now. And maybe they're a little bit better than they are. But given him coming off of an injury and where the Rams are, at least through five games, if I'm the Rams, do I really want to put my money into Odell Beckham? Isn't that your philosophy? I mean, your philosophy is to try to, to, to make as many moves as you can so that your team can compete for a Super Bowl every year. And you know, Odell works. I mean, you had him last year and, mm -hmm. you know, right now we don't know if, um, if Robinson works, I mean, we haven't, <laughs> we haven't seen a whole lot of production from him and you gave him a lot of money to, to be the number two guy and they get Van Jefferson back at some point. So that's going to help them. But I think to have, if they're anywhere near the hunt, you know, with four games left and if Odell can kind of get back to where he was last season, I mean, pay him his money, figure it out. I mean, it was know? bound to happen where one of these moves doesn't work for Les yeah. Snead. You know, the yeah. Robert Woods for Allen Robinson swap clearly has not worked yet. Not saying it won't, but through five weeks of the season, it just hasn't. So it was eventually going to when you when you gamble and you risk as much as less need does. Eventually, some of these are going to be very obvious that they just didn't work. And this is and this is one of them. I think this is obviously one of them. when you're averaging less points than the Bears, it's not working. It's not working. Yeah, I I think they've had other moves not work great in the past, but when Stan Kroenke is your your owner. The, he can erase those moves by just scratching a check and, and moving on. And, and, you know, we'll put the money on, I'm gonna take the dead cap hit and we'll, we'll go chase something else. So I just think they've been able to, I mean, Sammy Watkins wasn't uh, a great producer for them, but they, they moved on from him. They traded Brandon cooks, you know, Todd Gurley got old, they moved on from him. So there's been situations where they gave given guys a lot of money. They just have, I mean, Jared Goff, <laughs> you know, they, they, they drafted him and he, they said, no, he, you're not the dude. We're going to yeah. trade you. 
are, are you more surprised by the Rams' struggles or the Chiefs' success? Because the loss of Tyreek Hill, a lot of people had their eyes on them and thought that they would take a step back. Mm-hmm. They appear to be better because now they, he just throws to whoever's open as opposed to looking for someone. The Rams were always looked at as being a step ahead when it came to moves, the old F those picks situation. But like Alex said, it seems to have starting to catch up with them. Which one are you more surprised by? Got about a minute here, Eric. Not surprised by the Chiefs. I thought they would be the favorite to win this division because Andy Reid is their head coach. Their offense was good before Tyreek showed up. Andy Reid had great offense when he was with the Eagles. And Patrick Mahomes is perhaps the best quarterback in the league. So he doesn't need Tyreek Hill to create offense. He can... He can throw it to me and you and, and get first downs. I mean, that's how good he is. With the Rams, I think the issue is, is injuries. I mean, when, when you're not solid up front and you can't go back and run your regular offense because you have your third team center in there and he has to kind of set things up pre-snap, you're going to struggle. So I think once they get the O-line solid, I think they can get back to kind of playing the way they were last season. Eric Williams from FoxSports.com talking a lot of NFL here this afternoon because that's why we bring him on every week. Uh, before you go, Padres, Dodgers, Padres down 0-1. Prediction, what do you think happens here in the series? Oh, Padres in five. Oh, how about Padres a Padres-Mariners World Series, Eric? Oh, oh, natural yeah, rivalry. Natural Eddie rivalry. Better, Eddie better cut for the, for the chip? Yeah, yeah, right on. Yeah, the, the battle for Peoria. We, we all know that ain't happening, right? Yeah. Right. No. We do know that. <laughs> we do know that. Uh, we also <laughs> probably don't really believe in the Padres in five right now, but they get a win tonight. We'll see what happens. You just got to say it out loud. We will see what happens. Hey, Eric, uh, have a great week. The rest of your week. Thank you so much. As always, we'll talk to you next week. Uh, good luck to your Mariners. Good luck to the Padres. And uh, enjoy this next NFL weekend. We appreciate you, pal. All right. Appreciate y'all. Have a good one. All right, Eric Williams stopping by from foxsports.com. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. One more segment to go. We'll get back to the Padres Dodgers, and then we'll go right into the game on 1090. Stick around, everybody. Hunger is a year-round problem. The San Diego Food Bank and our North County Food Bank chapter provide food assistance at locations throughout the county. We need your help. Host a food drive, volunteer, or donate online. Thank you for making a difference. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Rome comes home. Yes, I said it. You can now catch the Jim Rome Show Monday through Friday, noon until 3 p.m. on the mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Back to San Diego, where it all started, on the mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. Drivers are getting in accidents at a rate we've never seen before, jumping 18% since 2020. There are higher incidents of speeding and more aggressive driving since the pandemic began. Please slow down and drive safely. It can save a life. The 2022 San Diego Loyal season is almost complete. Live on your view and yourview.com, watch your San Diego Loyal take on Sacramento Republic FC Saturday, October 15th at 7 p.m. Watch the final regular season game of the 2022 season as the San Diego Loyal prepare for the USL Championship playoffs. Sacramento Republic FC versus the San Diego Loyal Saturday at 7 on your view.
At the Barnes Firm, we're seeing more pedestrian and bicycle accidents. Drivers are rolling through red lights and distracted driving makes every intersection a danger zone for pedestrians. Look both ways when crossing, even if you have the right of way. Listen to the Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. Hola, I'm J.R. Cardenas. And I'm Vanessa Ramirez. We're the host for Subida, where we showcase California restaurants, music, art, culture, and so much more. We would love to talk to you about featuring your business on our show. Yes, and as an added bonus, you get to keep the professional video segment to repurpose and use on your website or social media channels. Please click on the link below to get more information about how to put your business on Subida. Mm -hmm. We hope to hear from you soon. Great things can be achieved when a community comes together. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Watch Doing More Sunday night at 6 on Your View or stream it online at yourview.com. Brought to you by Procopio, San Diego's largest law firm, committed to community, representing San Diegans for more than 75 years. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Hunger is a year-round problem. The San Diego Food Bank and our North County Food Bank chapter provide food assistance at locations throughout the county. We need your help. Host a food drive, volunteer, or donate online. Thank you for making a difference. San Diego Valley Coast Pain Treatment Center, uh, we take care of all various uh, needs of patients for management of their venous insufficiency. People who come here are mainly concerned about symptoms that brings them on or issues related to cosmetic uh, concern that uh, we can always take care of. Now with the advancement of uh, technology and so many catheter-based treatments, we can uh, treat our patients much more quickly, much more uh, comfortably with less downtime. Patients love the result invariably. It's been a huge impact in my life to, to feel better, to be able to power walk again. Overall, I'm just feeling like I used to feel when I was a lot younger, and I'm so grateful for this place. It's a privilege to take care of our patients. It comes from the heart, and I, I love it.
The way I would describe myself as a player is um, I can move around a lot. I'm very, you know, all over the field, wherever a coach needs me. I'm there, I'm kind of just an all-around player. Um, I'm, just, I'm just here to play. Let's go, baby! The thing I enjoy most about playing football is just being around the guys. I mean, the energy is just amazing. I just love um, coming out here and, you know, just giving all my effort and just, you know, we love to win. One of the biggest lessons that I've learned playing football is just, you know, pushing through adversity. You know, um, you know, there's always obstacles on the field. What motivates Anthony is the bar he sets for himself. When he accomplishes one thing, he pushes that bar a little higher and gets to that next level. And then when he accomplishes that, he pushes the bar a little higher and gets to that level. My name is Alejandro Eugenio Guido Perez. I play for the San Diego Loyal, and I'm a midfielder. Midfielder kind of does a little bit of everything. It attacks the fans, it helps organize the press to win the ball back, and then defend in the low block, and then attack and create opportunities for the forwards to score and, and yourself. I started at, in, at a young age playing soccer. I did it here in Chula Vista, but I also played in Tijuana, Mexico. definitely been restorative to be back home and be at a club, such a great club, that values the person, not just the player. I've been able to grow tremendously on and off the field and be taken care of by the family that's around me and supporting me. So Southwestern College, the name of the mariachi is Mariachi Garibaldi, is the performing group that we have. We've actually had as many as four different ensembles, so four different classes, beginning, intermediate, intermediate, advanced, and um, the advanced group is outstanding. <laughs> got that associate's degree in music with the mariachi specialization approved in 2004. And that was the first in the world anywhere. It's not a degree in mariachi music, it's a degree in music with a specialty, specialization in mariachi. The ensemble is great. I mean, it ranges anywhere from 30 to 50, sometimes 60 members every semester. It's, it's fantastic. The NFL lives here. If it's about the NFL, you found the right station. Join 1090 every Sunday during the NFL season for the exclusive SoCal home of not one, but two NFL games every Sunday during the season on the mightier 1090 ESPN radio. Hunger is a year-round problem. The San Diego Food Bank and our North County Food Bank chapter provide food assistance at locations throughout the county. We need your help. Host a food drive, volunteer, or donate online. Thank you for making a difference. Home of Guiding Hands helps San Diego community in that we're a resource for families. A lot of times when families first identify that their child, their loved one, might have an intellectual or developmental disabilities, they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. And we're here to help guide people through that process, to show them what a thriving life their loved one can have. Uh, it's a passion I share having uh, a daughter with a disability. I really love the place that I live at. Because of Home with Guiding Hands, I was able to move out of my parents' house and into a beautiful home that I love living in. And so like if you have an independent living service coordinator, they will help you like learn more about being independent and they help guide you through different things. They've helped me with um, lots of encouragement and love. 
Um, they've also given me an eyelash worker who is an amazing person and I love her so much. She's great. I could tell you the first, I think, week or so, I wasn't feeling very confident in myself. The first couple of nights I was like, oh, this is scary. But I look back on it now and I'm like, this is so easy. Main Street Living celebrates diverse abilities in partnership with Home of Guiding Hands, supporting the special needs community for over 55 years. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. All right, let's start with a little test to see how well you